Today we're making tiered tray DIYs. This is part one. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Alright, so I'm going to start out with some thrifted candy picks. I've got some pom poms. You can get those on a cord like trim or you can just get the little the ones in the bag. You're going to use paint. I changed my mind about the chalk paint. And then a hot cocoa sign that lights up and this came from Dollar Tree. It wasn't with the Christmas stuff, it was with more like the home stuff. Very nice. Okay, so I decided to use this paint instead because I started off with the chalk paint and it looked terrible. So I just wiped it off and then spray painted it and let it dry. Okay, so I'm going to just take these off the picks. And I chose these because they, they look like real candy to me. Okay, so here's some of the pom-poms and they are just in the bag. I'm going to use the white ones because I want it to make it look like either marshmallows or whip topping, something of the sort. So I'm just going to take those out and separate them. Choose two different sizes. Here's my sign with two coats of paint. And then I'm going to use some hot glue and just start putting these down. I'm not too concerned over the openings that are in the top because it's just going to allow more light through there. But it's not going to hurt anything to cover them up. I'm just going to go around the entire top with two different sizes. It doesn't matter. You can use all one size. This is just how I did it. Probably should have your little finger protectors on at this point. Now I want to take the little red and white piece. And that's just the one I decided to use. A little hot glue and kind of press it down in there to look like it's nestled down in that rich creamy topping. Now you could be done with that or you can get some of these little beaded pieces of, I don't know if they're stickers or trim, whatever you want to call them. And you can line out the mug or however you want to do it. I just put it down here to show you that it's an option if you want to do a couple of more embellishments. Then you can cut the individual little beads off there and put them in the O's in the wording if you like. And that's really simple, a very quick and easy one to start with. All right, on the next one, we're going to use one of these DIY gingerbread houses. And I've just decided to use the small one. I went ahead and bought several to use for other projects. I'm just going to take it apart, and it's just on there with some hot glue. Pop the top off of it, spray paint it white. And then I have one of these boxes that I've already done a DIY with, but this came from Dollar Tree too. I believe it's with the frames. It was a shadow box with some glitter in it, I think. And then this came from Joann's, but you can get very similar items at Dollar Tree right now with their Christmas plies. So I'm just going to decide which little piece I want to go in, and I think I like the snowman and the pine trees. So I'm going to peel off this backing, and then I'm going to cover it with another piece. I could have just left it on there. That would have been fine, too. And I like this one for this project. Yes, this will work. Now I've spray painted the little pine tree and it's drying. And then we're going to go ahead and cut out a piece to go on top of our paper here. Now, you don't need to just limit yourself to thinking that this could just be used on tear trays. You could use these things on coffee bars. You could use these in your cabinets. Any way that, and any place you want to use them. That'd also be nice if you have a small desk area, if you work in an office. These little things would be cute to just bring a little joy and Christmas into those areas. Once I started making them, I had so much and it was so lengthy I had to break this down into two different videos so I hope you enjoy this. We're going to sand it down after we've glued it and pressed our bubbles out. Just like that. You get the picture. You've seen me do this lots of times. Okay so now both pieces are the same color. You can paint those, you can use um, some markers if you want to, but I chose just to leave mine white since I have such a, a um, busy background. And these are glue dots, and I got these from Dollar Tree, so I wanted to try them out today and see how they work. And um, so far, so good. I'm just going to peel that off the backing, and then there's a clear piece and a little dot. It looks almost like blue, like a contact. 
and then you just pull those off and then press it down. Now this is flat. There's going to be no dimension to this first piece that I've put down. I'm just trying to make sure that I get it where I have enough room for this to sit back down in the frame. And then I'm going to take one of these little poppets, but you can get something similar at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to just place those on a couple of areas, peel off the backing, because they're stickers. But they help give dimension to your projects. And since this is a little kind of like a shadow box frame, this will work perfect for this. I'm going to press it down to make sure it sticks and then set it back down in my frame. You can embellish the bottom if you want to, um, but I'm not going to do anything more to it. And then just, yeah, just like that. Fasten it back down with the little clamps there, and I'm going to give it a little stand just to help it stay stable when it's sitting on my tear tray. So this is what it looks like. Easy. On to the next, I have some scrap foam board. I have these terrible, terrible bows that I do not recommend that I end up not using. Some Dollar Tree ribbon, and this is a Dollar Tree little house decor piece that I've used before, and one of these beautiful calendars from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use the December block that's on the back. So a little bitty one. I'm gonna just cut that out. And I'm going to trace it out on a piece of this little foam board. This is to give it a thick backing so that it stands out and away from my project. I'm going to use my glue stick. Use whatever kind you want or adhesive spray or Mod Podge, whatever you choose. And then I'm using my little Cricut tool here to just press it down. Okay, so now we could put it on top of that if we wanted to, but I'm gonna to try to tear it off. And let me tell you, this was a pain in the behind and you'll notice I come back with the Band-Aid on my finger. See there? I cut my finger between the end and the bend. So yeah, hurts like crazy business. So you're gonna see me stumble over a lot of my projects because it was hurting and because I was favoring that finger. Try not to use it too much. I'm trying to protect it here with the little finger protector. Poor little boo-boo crafting in injuries um you know you work around them so we're just going to wrap this around there i finally did get all my pieces off sanded it down wiped it off and now i'm just going to wrap it with a little bit of this gorgeous ribbon that comes from dollar tree i love it for all seasons it's just so pretty and feminine cottagey and farmhousey so you see i want to put my picture down there kind of center it and then I want to use a pick. This is just a random pick. I don't know where it came from. Pretty sure it came out of something uh, like a arrangement maybe from the thrift store. I pull so many things apart that I can't remember and I save them from year to year. Okay, so simple little bow here to go on the top and you see what we've done, what I've done. And I'm going to be repeating the same type of bow throughout this part of this entire video. So you're gonna see this over and over again and I do speed through and skip a little bit on some because you've seen me do this bow so many times. However, if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed, you really should because I do a lot of slowed down um, bow making so you can get a better idea of how to make those bows if you're having a time or a struggle trying to do that. Okay, so double knot in the back with that jute. I'm gonna trim it off and then pull it down and make it pretty. I'm gonna trim my ends. And this is just a bunch of scrap ribbon that I already had. I had a lot of scrap ribbon. You can always use it. If you've got enough of it that you can make some little bows, just save it, put it in a bag or a jar, and you can use it for little projects like this. So there's my little cutie farmhouse piece. Now, if you wanna just Finish this off, go ahead and go around it with some jute and just tuck it down in there. Hey, if you wanna show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. See the link in the description box below. And my coffee shout out today is for Michelle Angelique who bought me three coffees. Thank you so much for your generosity. Okay, on to the next project. We are going to use a little gnome. I know not everybody is into these gnomes, but y'all, they have potential. This is some cording. I think I got it from Dollar General last year after Christmas. 
and there's a bunch of little mini ornaments these came from some packs that i got at goodwill that somebody had donated i think they came from walmart i've got some little pom-poms there and i've got some little ornament trucks from dollar tree so this little guy needs some love i want his hands to stay out like he is holding something so i'm going to take a piece of my floor wire and we're going to wire him so that his arms stay open like he's running towards you to give you a hug we're just going to kind of sew in the backing here from his sh where his shoulder would be <laughs> really it looks like he just has gloves on but you know you're just going to go back and forth and back and forth through this soft material kind of get under the hat you want it to be kind of disguised and then you're going to push it out in the top part on the other side where his shoulder would be i mean they're not anatomically correct they're gnomes so who knows but you see you get the you get the idea if you pull your wire and twist it those arms will stay out in that form perfect perfect you could wire his legs too if you wanted to maybe have him sitting with his legs crossed or something like that all right so i'm going to fix his hat and cover up the the wire that's left I'm going to comb his little beard. He needs a little bit of grooming. I went through and tried to pick the cutest one. Now I'm pushing all the, the uh, stuffing down in his hat because I want his hat to look like a sleeping hat. So I'm going to do that and then press it to the side. I'm going to put a little clamp on there on his head just like that while we work on his little boots. I want to put some cute little pom-poms on the toes of his little, his little boots there. I think it just looks so festive. And then a matching pom-pom right on the end of his cap. Cute, cute, cute. Yes, he's looking great. Look at that beard. Okay, so I know I want him to hold a sign. And I've got several of these to choose from. Just to give you an idea, I'm showing you the ones that I kind of looked at. Or some things that he could be holding. But in the end, I decided that the season greetings sign, the shape of it, would be the best. So I'm going to wrap the ends in this, this is almost like cotton, cotton cording. I don't know how to explain it. Almost like a Q-tip. It's, it's strange, but it works. It works. So I'm going to just wrap that around and trim it off. This is going to cover up the hole where the hanger was on the back of this. So there's one side and we're going to do it on both sides so that it looks intentional. There you go. Okay, and now we have to have a piece to actually hang it. So you're going to put a strip of glue across the back and press it down so that he now has a hanging sign. In the little glove, there's an area between the rest of the fingers and the thumb. So I'm just tucking that cord there with a little bit of glue, kind of wrapping it just slightly around the back so it, would, it won't fall off. And then there he goes. He's holding his little season's greeting sign. Isn't he precious? Now let me show you about Mr. Gnome here. He's going to fall over if he tries to sit on his own unless you prop him up against something. So, we're going to give him a little seat. We're going to take one of these Jenga blocks. I'm going to use the one from Dollar Tree. It's the smaller one. You don't see it as much. I'm just going to sit it there and then glue it on. Give it just a minute. And then show you that now he can sit up. How's that? Yes, he's happy now. What do you think about my little cute gnome? He's so precious. Follow me on my social media, guys. I would love to see you on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, so now we're going to do a book stack. I found these at Goodwill. They are old books. Look how precious they are. And I've had them sitting in my daughter's room just as decoration. And I thought, hey, they're red. I know they're red under there. Let's use these for a little tiered tray project. So the top's got this really pretty greenery and acorn picture on it so I'm, I'm gonna work with that we're gonna go with this rustic look and I've got some ribbon and this came from Dollar Tree you can see the packaging there we're gonna wrap these around I'm gonna wrap a top piece glue it trim it off and then we're gonna make a little bow and this is a simple bow just like the bow you know like a little shoelace bow it's a little different than the one we did before but you know you get the idea then I'll cut it off, set it to the side, and we're going to put our second wrapping around the books. Now, I'm putting the glue on the ribbon in a very small amount because I don't want to damage these beautiful little books. So no, no worries. I didn't hurt my books. All right, I'm going to trim off this pick. This was from the thrift store. It's a very nice quality, 
And I'm just going to tuck these in here before I put down my bow, just like that. So cute. We're going to add a little bit of red berries here, just because we've used, we're going to be using these red berries a little bit throughout our projects today. I'm just going to tuck some there and then tuck some on the ribbon on this other side. And these are precious. Look at these. You can use mini Bibles or any types of little books that you have. You can use pieces of wood and paint them however you want to do it. So the next thing I'm going to do is make a star. I'm going to use some of those. Um, I didn't end up using the beads, but I did use the, uh, the paper there. I'm giving you a measurement of my star. It's about five and a half inches, I think it said. So you can use any star that you have. Um, the wooden one for me will work. This is a very recent thrift. And I'm going to cut down this paper. This is Hobby Lobby uh, paper pad. Then I'm just gonna make sure that it's gonna fit on there good. It's not gonna be perfect. That doesn't matter because we're gonna sand it. Put on your glue stick, place it down, starting in the middle, going outward. Make sure that we press down on all of the surfaces then we're going to sand. Now, you could paint first if you want to, or you could, depending on what colors you're going to use for Christmas. I know some of the vintage stuff has like a gold color in it, but I want mine to be white, so I'm going to go ahead and do this now. And then once it's dry, decide how we're going to embellish it. I'm going to take another one of these little tags that came out of that stuff that I believe came from Walmart. When I've gone to Walmart and looked, they have a lot of things like this, so that's why I'm saying I think it's Walmart. Um, that's a guess. Feel free to correct me in the comments if, uh, if you know where those came from. Now there's no real purpose to what I'm doing here. I'm just going to wrap around part of this star with a little bit of this jute. Alright, then I'm going to glue it down. Just like that. And I'm going to take some of these and these I think Mainstays comes from Walmart, but I got it at the thrift store, and it's just a, like a frosted, I think this looks like mistletoe to me. I mean, I, it looks like mistletoe, but I'm going to use this piece of greenery, and I'm just going to tuck it around here and there in that piece of cording before I put down my little tag sign. And joy to the world, y'all know. Y'all know my word, right? You know my word is joy. I want you to find joy. And, and speaking of the word joy, you guys bring me so much joy. So much joy. You are changing my life, and I want you to know that. I'm making a little bit of money now on my channel. It makes a big difference to my family. Um, the coffees that you buy when you share my videos, everything you do. It's so important to me, and it brings me so much joy to be able to be part of this community with y'all. I, I can't, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. So you can see what I've been doing here, and then I'm just going to add a bow. I'm gonna wrap about nine or 10 times around my hand with this jute, and then I'm gonna tie it off in the middle so that I'm grabbing the two ends there that were left. I want everything tucked in so that it doesn't fall apart. And I'm going to tie that in two knots, and then I'm going to squish it together and tie it again. And this is going to give us, you can see the struggle here with the band-aid. There was a struggle, there was a serious struggle. I recovered though, I got through it. I talked myself right on off the edge. Okay, so we're going to put this bow down, and I'm just going to have the two tails, and I'm just going to press them underneath the bottom side. Just like that. You can do more than that if you want, however you want to do it. But here's our pretty little joy to the world star. You can do this. Y'all can definitely do this. Maybe on a different scale, but you can do it. Okay, everybody has seen these box signs from the Dollar Tree. I've got three different sizes. I've used them before, and I'm going to use them again. Talk about saving your money. These are so easy to do. Pop the back out. You can peel off or cover up what's on the inside. Be sure be sure you get every bit of the glue off that you can get off. Then you're going to lay it on your fabric. Allow yourself about an inch over on each piece. And then you're just going to start gluing your pieces down. 
So I'm going to run a bead of glue, not on the edge, but on the back. And I'm see there, I can't even keep the finger protector on my poor old bobo finger. And then you're just going to rub down. If you got a striped piece like this is, this drifted material, then just be sure that you kind of are conscious of your stripes so that you don't have it crooked when you turn it around. And then on the back, you're just going to fold it like you're wrap, wrapping a package. Fold your corner in and then flip it over. Just be careful with your little fingers that you don't burn yourself. Okay, so when all your pieces are done, you can put some paper on the back to cover that up if you want. Or if you're going to keep it for yourself, really not that necessary. I've got some Wooden Joy stickers that I am recycling from another project. I'm going to use them again. I am not sure where they came from originally, but I got them at Dirt Cheap. Okay, so I've just taken some red paint. You choose whatever color coordinates with what you're doing. And here we go with Joy again. You know what I say about Joy. We're going to color those. Very pretty. And then I'm going to put them aside and let them dry. In the meantime, I'm going to reassemble my houses just like so. I love this fabric. I was trying to choose between this one and then I have one that's a black and white um, ticking, mattress ticking. But for the rustic look that I'm going for, I really think this color looks good. Don't you think this is nice together? This is really nice. And it's the final result is just gorgeous. I cannot, I can't. It's really nice. So here we are with our three little houses. And here are our letters. You can put those in whatever order you want. You can do small to, to large or however you want to do it. Now we're going to take stacks of ribbon. These are all beige, white, and red ribbons that I have. And I'm going to use a different like pattern and different um, style ribbon for each of these houses to embellish them. This is the same bow as we did the first time, but you're doing it with three ribbons instead of one. Now, the main thing you need to know is you've got to really hold that steel and tight around that knot. Otherwise, when you start in pulling it apart like I'm doing here, you'll pull your entire bow apart. So be sure you get it on there tight. Once you do that, you can trim it up or put your edges in the, your uh, end pieces in the front, whichever way you want to do it. Then I'm going to use a different set of ribbon on the next one, but they all coordinate. And then on the next one, uh, even more different set but you can see they're all the same all the same thing they coordinate nicely and so there'll be a bow on the top of each little house now we're going to go back to that same pick from um, Walmart and I'm going to put two pieces in each box there on the bottom and I'm going to take some more of those berries and cut them up into little pieces so this is easy enough trim down where you need to trim to put your pieces in and have them lay down. They're gonna try to jump up because they're bulky. So they're gonna try to pull away. Just hold them down there for a minute or two until it is set, to your glue is set, just like that. Then you're just gonna add your little berries in there. Y'all can use regular stickers. You can use chip wood. You don't even have to use the word joy. You can put little snowmen or the little wood ornaments that are Christmas trees that you get from Dollar Tree. You can put those in there instead. That would be really cute. Just whatever style and whatever your preference is. So we're gonna do the same thing to each and every one of those. So I'm gonna call these three, three projects because they actually are a little different even though they are a set. Now we're going to put a little bit of the mistletoe in the top because, hey, we all need a little mistletoe hanging from the top of the house, right? That's how we get our sugar. Okay, so here is our final look. And this actually has videos that you're going to see, I mean projects, that you'll see in the next video. So the rest of them will be in the next video. But you can see how everything is going to coordinate together. I don't have my hot cocoa mug on right now, but it will be in the next video. So be looking for it. Be sure that you are subscribed. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.